Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, Slugs. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a couple out fishing on a lake. The woman gets bored and invites her boyfriend to go swimming with her, but he says that there's a nearby sewer that must be pumping waste into the lake. He suddenly slips from his perch at the back of the boat and falls into the water. At first, the woman thinks that he is pranking her, but the water begins to turn red and she screams. One night, an old man almost gets run over by a car full of teenagers. Shaking his head, he goes home to a dark and empty house, not knowing that a multitude of slugs are waiting for him. He gets a bite of pizza and then lays down on his couch. He starts screaming. Health inspector, Mike, and his wife, Kim, go out to dinner with another couple, David and his wife. After eating, they leave early, because Mike has an early appointment with the sheriff the next morning. The couple go home and get ready for bed. As they start kissing, two slugs move on their bedroom window. The next day, Mike heads to the old man's house with the sheriff to evict him. They find the old man's dead body on his couch, eaten to the bone. The sheriff and his men are shaken by this gruesome sight, and they struggle to find an explanation for the old man's death. Mike returns to his office. He receives a call from a woman in town, who is complaining about the clogged sewers. He gets her address and goes to her house, where he sees his sanitation supervisor that the woman also called. She is impatient and demands that something be done about the horrible smell coming from the sewers immediately. The sanitation supervisor puts on a hazmat suit and climbs down the sewer. He finds the clawed pipe and tries to free the blockage with a metal hook. He discovers animal meat and skin stuck inside, and then something pulls on his hook. Spooked, he immediately runs. Kim, who works as a teacher at the local high school, dismisses her students. She's known as the terror teacher, and her students make fun of her behind her back. Afterward, Mike picks her up for lunch. The other high school kids are also dining out for lunch. They talk about the old man's death and what could have possibly caused it. They also plan to go to a party later that week. That afternoon, an old married couple are tending to their plants in their greenhouse. The wife goes inside the house to clean, while the husband carries some plants inside the greenhouse. A slug bites his arm, and he tries to get it off him, but it has already burrowed deeply. In his panic, he knocks over an oil canister, and it spills to the floor. The husband grabs an axe and starts whacking his arm. The wife hears the commotion and sees her husband dismembering his limb. The greenhouse catches on fire and explodes, killing the couple. Mike arrives home and is greeted by Kim. She informs him about the old couple's death. Kim is doing gardening, and Mike notices slime trails all over the flower beds. He says to Kim that all the houses he inspected that day have similar slime trails too. It turns out that several slugs are in their garden. Mike reaches out to touch one, and it bites his finger. He immediately captures two of the slugs in a jar, and goes with David's wife to her British scientist friend's laboratory to get the slugs looked at. Meanwhile, David's wife falls asleep in front of the TV at her home. She is awakened by the arrival of David from work. She hurriedly chops some lettuce for dinner, not knowing that there is a slug embedded inside the vegetable. When Mike and Kim get to the lab, Mike asks the scientist if slugs can eat meat or animals. The scientist says that there are some species that can eat tiny insects, but slugs usually are herbivores. They leave the slugs with the scientist, and Mike promises to call the next morning. A theory is already forming in his head, and he starts to believe that slugs are the culprit for the gory deaths that's been happening around town. After their dinner, David gets a stomach cramp. His wife wants to call a doctor immediately, but David assures her that he'll be fine. On the other side of town, a rebellious teenager sneaks into the house of his girlfriend for a tryst. That night, at the scientist's lab, he pulls out a slug from the jar and gets a sample from it. He slides the specimen under the microscope, not noticing that the other slug has crept up from the jar. The slug attacks his hamster, and the scientist is surprised that a slug is able to do that. The teenager and his girlfriend are lying in bed after their tryst. He gets up, but his foot is bitten by a slug. The girlfriend gets out of bed too and falls into the massive pile of slugs crawling on her bedroom floor. The slugs soon devour and kill the teenage couple. The next morning, the sheriff is shocked after seeing the two teenagers nod on corpses in the girlfriend's bedroom. Mike arrives and tells the sheriff that he believes that mutant slugs are responsible for the recent deaths in town. However, the sheriff does not accept his theory. David wakes up that day, feeling under the weather. His wife tries to get him to stay at home and rest, but he has an important meeting with some business partners to sign a deal to build a shopping center in town. 
Later that day, Mike meets with the sanitation supervisor, who informs him that his men have been finding animal carcasses down in the sewer. He also discovered from old maps of the town, that a huge area used to be a toxic waste dump. The sanitation supervisor believes that something is coming from the sewer, and has been eating animals and people in town. David goes to his important lunch meeting. However, he starts to feel unwell, and excuses himself for the bathroom. His nose begins to bleed, but he wipes it off and returns to his table. As he and his companions cheer their newly inked deal, more blood gushes from his nose and mouth. Tiny worms emerge from his every orifice as he screams in horror. The sanitation supervisor and Mike arrive at the restaurant where David died. The sheriff hands him a jar with worms taken from the body, and Mike decides to take the specimen to the scientist. At his lab, the scientist determines that the tiny worms are actually blood flukes, parasites that are usually found in the bloodstreams of slugs. He also tells Mike and the sanitation supervisor that the carnivorous slugs terrorizing the town can produce slime that may be fatal paralytic in large doses. They come to the conclusion that the slugs are using the sewer as a breeding ground. Mike returns to his office afterward and is informed by his secretary that his worried wife has been calling. He immediately dials their home telephone, and Kim asks him to come home right away. He races home and sees her holding a knife. She points to the huge slugs emerging from their faucet. He squashes them all with a pan, then calls the sheriff's office. Mike leaves and goes to the head of the water department, demanding that he cut off the water and declare a health emergency. The head dismisses his concerns, and orders him to get out of his office, and secure the mayor's permission first, before ordering him around. Unbeknownst to the head, a slug is slowly coming out of his toilet bowl. Mike barges into the mayor's office, and warns him about the impending slug crisis. He tells him that there are slugs in the water supply, so they have to immediately shut it down to contain the slugs. The two business partners that David was meeting with earlier, hears Mike's theory and decides to leave, without signing the deal for the shopping center. Mike tells them that the town used to be a toxic waste dump, and now killer slugs are terrorizing the citizens. The mayor is desperate to get the deal signed, so he personally shows the partners that his faucet does not have any slug. Appeased, they sign the deal. The head of the water department's secretary returns from her lunch break, and sees dozens of slugs feasting on his dead body. Fortunately, the scientist develops a mixture to neutralize the slugs, using arsenic. Mike and Cox have planned to deploy the mixture in large quantities to finally eliminate all the slugs in town. However, the scientist needs time to make a large batch of the mixture. Afterward, Mike goes to the sanitation supervisor's house to ask for his help in dispersing the mixture into the sewers. But the sanitation supervisor is hesitant because the mixture is highly flammable and may jeopardize the safety of the town's citizens. Mike explains that they have no other choice but this plan, and he finally convinces the sanitation supervisor to help him. The sanitation supervisor kisses his wife goodbye, and tells her that he and Mike are going to save the town. Mike goes home, but Kim is not there. He grabs a flashlight, looks at his basement, and discovers that many slugs are inhabiting it now. Kim finally appears, and Mike tells her to go to her mother's house, so she can be safe. At first, she doesn't want to go, but when she sees the slugs coming out of her basement, she agrees to leave. Meanwhile, oblivious teenagers in town are partying in the woods. The sanitation supervisor, Mike, and the scientist all prepare to enact their plan. After a few hours, the scientist has finally finished making enough batches of the mixture to eradicate the slugs. The sanitation supervisor points out that the sewers are miles long, and they'd need to gather the slugs in one place for the plan to work. Mike replies that he's got an idea for that. A blonde teenager argues with her two male friends, and says that she doesn't want to party anymore. One of them tries to kiss her, but she refuses his advances. The sanitation supervisor rolls out a map of the sewers and pinpoints a particular chamber where most of the slugs would be. There's a manhole covered directly above this chamber that they can use to unload the mixture to kill the slugs. The other male friend puts on a mask and scares the blondie. He then tries to force himself on her. She runs from him and ends up inside the sewers where she is pounced on by the slugs. On the other hand, the boy looks for the blondie. However, her body is now being dragged off by the slugs deeper into the sewer. Mike and the sanitation supervisor enter the sewer, wearing hazmat suits. However, they find out that their map is incorrect, because the entrance to the chamber is sealed off. They try a roundabout way to get to the entrance. Soon after, they find the chamber, and sure enough, most of the slugs are in there. They cut an electrical wire, and let it electrocute the slugs. The two leave, but they wander into a section of the sewer that is not marked on the map. The sanitation supervisor guesses that they're near an old factory, Mike contacts the scientist through a walkie-talkie, and tells him to meet them at the sewer entrance near the factory instead. 
As the two walk, they discover millions more slugs clean to the sewer walls. The scientist parks the truck full of the mixture, and informs Mike that he'll open the manhole cover now. The sanitation supervisor and Mike stumble into the breeding ground of the slugs. Mike opens the large sack of meat, and dumps it into the pool full of slugs, to distract them while they try to escape. The scientist is struggling to open the manhole cover, and suddenly, the sheriff appears with a stern look on his face. The sanitation supervisor opens a closed pipe, and water comes rushing out, pushing him into the pool. Mike tries to save him, but it's too late. Mike climbs out of the manhole, whose cover the sheriff and the scientist work together to open. They then pour the mixture into the hole, and the sewer goes up in flames, killing the slugs and starting fires across town. The flames eventually die down, and the scientist comforts Mike and tells him that the sanitation supervisor wholeheartedly chose to go with him, despite the risk. Several cars and a fire truck arrive, and Kim comes running to Mike. The couple happily reunite, ready to restore their hormoneship. However, the movie ends with the lone survivor slug crawling on a sewer grate, signifying that the terror is far from over. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.